calling for more resources and support from global leaders in Davos, Switzerland. Switzerland Wednesday, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky saying, quote, tragedies are outpacing life, the tyranny is outpacing democracy. However, amid the Russian war in Ukraine, crypto has proven to be a gateway for value transfer for fleeing refugees. Joining us now is Yulia Parkomenko, Director of the Virtual Assets Department at the Ministry of Digital Transformation of Ukraine, along with Michael Chabanian, founder of Ukraine-based Kuna Exchange. Welcome to you both. Thanks for joining us, Julia and Michael. Michael, you've been with us uh, several times. A few times. times. A, a few, yeah. Times. But first, I mean, I was really, I, my heart goes out to you and your country, Julia. You're telling me that you're still living in Kiev. You're dealing with a disaster day by day. Can you tell us what is the state of Ukraine right now? It's quite a difficult situation in Ukraine right now, especially in the whole country, uh, because of we have like a, more than 20 hours a day without electricity all over the country, and it's quite difficult to work, even work really, because in no internet, no heating, no water, and uh, we try to do our best to uh, to uh, to I don't know to work in this situation. So we try to even drive car and try to find the connection. Mm -hmm. So too many missiles, too many bombs from the Russia, probably one or two twice per week. So it's quite, it's quite hot. But we should, we should protect our country. We should continue our work. Yeah. Right. And in the midst of that, I mean, Michael, your exchange has been very much involved uh, with her department as well in trying to uh, distribute humanitarian aid collect crypto donations. So what's the latest on that? Because last year around March, I believe it was almost $100 million in donations. What's the updated number and how effective, what are these donations? Where are they going? So um, um, basically the, we had the Aid for Ukraine Fund, which was backed by the Ministry of Digital Transformation. They were helping with the uh, publicity and, um, and spreading the word. And um, that's why we received a lot of uh, donations from the uh, wealthy crypto guys, namely the founders of the blockchains. Um, so we did the major role in the first month, maybe two months, because in, in the first month, we were the largest donor to Ukraine in general, even larger than US, EU, or any other country, uh, because we saw from the uh, historical- crypto donations? In general. Okay. I mean, the, the first month, U.S. was not, you know, giving us a lot of a lot of help. Uh, they were uh, cautious about it, as they were. The world was cautious. Uh, uh, but um, yeah, so we did the uh, the largest impact was in the first two months. Later, closer to the beginning of the summer or midsummer, uh, the fund was transforming from just pure crypto to a newly created fund by the president, United 24. So um, gradually, we basically just transformed from being just crypto to the more broad humanitarian uh, government fund. Because for example, using crypto, you cannot buy uh, weapons or ammunition or anything. The only thing we could, uh, we could do is buy humanitarian uh, goods, uh, maybe like bulletproof vests, like close to the army, but not, not really something that we can defend ourselves with. So, but with the uh, official government fund, uh, obviously the money could go to the special importers of the uh, military or whatever. So, uh, you know, we just shifted the focus from being purely uh, crypto humanitarian towards the uh, general government of Ukraine. And that's how the United 24 was created. Do you have an update on the figure of how much has been raised? Oh, the, the, uh, the, we stopped the, um, uh, the marketing and, and campaigns maybe beginning of uh, summer. So right now there are no more donations. We're not okay. like asking for anything because we did our role in the beginning. We were there to help. We did our role. And now basically uh, it, it stopped, it's finished. For a time, FTX was also involved in crypto yeah. donations in Ukraine. Were you, uh, I don't know, partnered with them at all or no? No, no, no. The, uh, oh, I got so much controversy. I, I had a few uh, guys on the Twitter that were posting my, the pictures of me and my cars. I really like cars and they look shiny and, and bright colors. Oh. Anyway, and he was like making the uh, parallel statements that, look, this is FTX and this is Michael Chibanian with his cars. And, you know, but the problem is that these cars were there before the, uh, before the war, before the fund. Okay, actually, I wanted to address that because I saw <laughs> a, a headline on CNBC. It read, 1.4 trillion wipeout hits crypto industry in Davos, except for a lone flashy orange Bitcoin car. Now that's your car. What do you have to say for yourself? I have to say that uh, continuing with the FTX, uh, first of all, being the owner of the uh, crypto exchange, I highly suggest 
don't keep your crypto on the exchanges. You know, you, you, we have this structure. You have the private keys. Keep the crypto by yourself. No other um, founder of keep the them exchanges. In yeah. <laughs> uh, keep, keep it like, uh, I don't know. You, you make the decisions, first of all, but don't rely on someone else who will be in charge of your money. With the crypto, you can do it by yourself. You have your private keys, it's your crypto. That's it. So uh, we were using uh, FTX on the first uh, first few months uh, to send money to the National Bank, for example, because, uh, again, as I said, we couldn't use uh, crypto for everything. So it was just a peg before to convert crypto to US dollars. That's it. So we didn't keep any money on FTX. We haven't lost any money on FTX. We got the bad publicity at the end of it with using FTX. But, uh, yeah, so FTX was just helping us out in right. the you know, exchange. Let's talk about another subject that is uh, hit big in... In Davos with uh, Ukraine, and that's uh, Ukrainian Vice Prime Minister Mikhailo Fedorov, who's also Ukraine's Minister for Digital Transformation. He announced in Davos that he plans to receive his salary in the country's CBDC. Yulia, do you plan to do the same? Of course I'm planning to do the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, I understand that Ukraine's CBDC is aiming to be launched in 2024. What's the uh, update on that, the timeline? Um, timeline, it's uh, current uh, because uh, now we're together with National Bank of Ukraine, we're working on uh, con uh, development, like an uh, entire concept of using uh, CBDC in our country. And like a result, in 2024, we will launch our national uh, pilot project. But of course, our main role on this implementation works, of course, uh, National Bank. But we are like in our ministry, we're interested in launching this project as soon as possible. So we assist on everything, like technolo technological, educational assistance. We, of course, uh, communicate with um, international and Ukrainian companies who helps to and involve, of course, in this uh, try uh, in this development. So the virtual assets bill became law last March in Ukraine, uh, legalizing crypto in you in the country. Uh, what are the developments in crypto and blockchain technology that you hope to bring to the country? Um, first of all, yes, the law is adopted last year, but now we are. Um, uh, do like a lot of work to uh, try to connect our law to uh, European Commission. Like you know that we uh, become a candidate to European Mission, European you know, uh, membership. So now we are doing our best to implement all the uh, European standards to the, our national law. So, of course, uh, together with National Bank of Ukraine and National Commission for Securities and Stock Market, we're working on uh, necessary amendments in tax law and civil codes also. Mm -hmm. I also heard some projects that, you know, you showed me on your phone, mm -hmm. uh, something with digital identity. Also, I've heard of cultural projects to mm -hmm. maintain and preserve artifacts, art in Ukraine on the blockchain in case they get destroyed. Can you tell me about more about that. Uh, if we talk about blockchain technology in, in our country, in our government, it's like a new. So last year uh, in, June, in June, we joined uh, like um, observers in the European Blockchain Partnership. And now with a Switzerland company, we're working on creating the concept of using this technology blockchain in our country. And uh, of course, maybe in the, last, uh, in the end of this year or maybe 2024, we'll also create like a pilot project in our government. And of course, we want to make our country like better, you know, when we will we'll win, of course, we'll rebuild our country and do it like the best country in the world. The theme of this year's WEF is collaboration amid fragmentation. Is And one of the global risks laid out in one of uh, WEF's report is the war in Ukraine by Russia. Is there hope? Where, where do you see? Uh, it's can't I can't to answer this question. It's really difficult. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, well, in your conversations at WEF, where have they gone, and where where do you see some progress? Hmm. <laughs> it's. It's quite difficult, but uh, for example, if we're talking about Davos, uh, the main purpose for us to to tell the truth about the situation in Ukraine, uh, to involve people uh, to the situation, that everybody should know about the real, what real uh, situation needs. So uh, a lot of companies uh, helps us, of course, our partners like Mikhail also helps us a lot. So we work together and like probably Mm -hmm. uh, one of the last questions I want to ask was, uh, 
Bitlazzo. Uh, have you even heard of this exchange? Bitlazzo? B- Bitlazzo. <laughs> you <laughs> don't even know the this? name. No, um, I think that was the joke on crypto Twitter. Bit, yeah. Bits what? And apparently uh, one of their counterparties was Binance, and I know you've been skeptical about Binance and their involvement in uh, transactions with Russia. So uh, did you Oh, I'd, I would like to advertise Binance, by the way. Yesterday, they launched a new way of how you can top up Ruble on the Binance. Um, so, I mean, pff, uh, considering the uh, what's happening in Ukraine, they're still working with Ruble, so obviously they're still working in Russia. I mean, the rest of the civilized world has pulled out. But anyway, Bitzlato. Bitzlato was a very niche uh, project. Obviously, I heard about it. Uh, I can't say that it was something mainstream or mass market. It was, as I said, niche. It was uh, solving certain problems for uh, certain people, I guess. So it wasn't like anything big. or That's why you never heard of it. Mm-hmm. That's why... Um, and so your reaction to the- my reaction: don't keep your crypto on uh, exchanges. That's why. Yeah, that's my reaction. Don't keep it on my exchange or any other. I mean, if everyone would follow this rule, there would be no problem with the FTX or Bitzgather or any other exchange. And so your keys is your crypto, not your keys, not your crypto. And are you continuing to have concerns about Binance's uh, relationship uh, with Russia? They're still working there. They're earning money on Russia. They are helping uh, um, the good and bad Russians uh, escape the sanctions. And I think it's it's a big problem because, for, for my country at least, we are fighting, uh, you know, my people are dying every day. And there is the exchange which works both in Ukraine and Russia. And you can easily, uh, you know, send money from Russia to Ukraine and vice versa. Or you can send get the uh, money out of Russia or in Russia. And who knows what, what the money is doing in Iran or any other country. We saw that report it's on, uh, uh, I think it was Reuters, right? The uh, how the um, Binance. What would you hope Binance would do? Um, Binance wouldn't do anything. They they earn, like to earn money. I understand them from this point of view. But uh, I mean, when people are dying, you, do you really want to earn money on blood? I don't. That's why we pulled out of Russia immediately, same day. So I hope they will follow the lead and pull out, but um, this is not acceptable. I mean, why U.S. companies are pulling out, European companies are pulling out? They're suffering, they're losing money, billions and billions of dollars, but not Binance, because they're special. I don't think they're special. I mean, I guess the U.S. government is going to do something about it. We'll see. They're losing a lot of on withdrawals right now. But... Michael, Yulia, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for joining thank you. us. Thank you so much. All right. That was Yulia Parkamenko from the Ministry of Digital Transformation of Ukraine and Kuna Exchange founder Michael Chibanian.